Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Hello and welcome to Series 4 of Property Elevator. In this show, we give budding developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals, or who we call our property investment angels. These are John Howard, our chair angel, Helen Chorley, our number cruncher, Nicholas Woolwork, our creative thinker, Paul Mahoney, our investor from Down Under, and Ranjan Bhattacharya, our YouTuber. Now, we know that property is not a game for the faint-hearted. With hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake, yes, the rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong very quickly. This is why it's fantastic that not only could you walk away with the financial backing of one of our angels, but you also get their expert knowledge, which we know is just as important. So with that being said, let's do some deals. Is it on the market, off the market? How have you, have you found it? Can I just ask about the source of that fund? That's what you should be doing before you before you even exchange, in my view. I think the the, the, the overall profit is too tight. But you, but you can't work it out on that because that isn't your total cost. Hello and welcome to episode four of series four. We've already had so many deals happen over the course of the last few episodes. Let's see if we get any more today. So Thomas, welcome to the show. Hello Lizzie, happy to be here. Great, it's great to have you. Um, tell us where you've come from today. Uh, I've come from Surrey, uh, from a place called Hawksback. Okay, and a little bit about your property background. I've been building and renovating properties for more than 20 years, okay. part time. Okay. But I moved into property development full time a year ago. Great, okay, so that's exciting. What was your job previously? I was a corporate executive for more than 20 years in Hungary, Germany, UK, Russia, UK again, right. and then I moved in, uh, into property full time. Right, so Europe, pretty much. I've been around. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you yes, have. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think we're going down to Kent next. There's Kent and Kent, isn't there? Very good. Cool. We've got to see which part of Kent it is. Let's get him in. Hi, Tomas. Thanks for coming in today. Um, looking forward to hearing about your deal. Good afternoon, Angels. My name is Tom Ash, and I'm here to present to you one of our deals subject to planning. The parameters, main parameters of the deals are as follows. The property is in Ashford, close, close to Ashford, uh, less than 16 minutes drive. GDV is 3.5, 3.6 million. The total project cost is 2.82 million. We're expected to make a gross profit close to £800,000. The total project cost certainly includes uh, the purchase of the land for £590,000. And your expected return on your investment we're asking for is 29%. My business partner and I, we are ex-corporate executives. I renovated and built properties part-time for more than 20 years. Since early 2021, we moved full-time into property development. This site has been included in the adopted plan of Folkestone and Hythe Borough Council. The planners designated the site for residential development and the uh, forecasted and expected volume that we can build there are five dwellings. The neighboring part of Brookland is in conservation area. Our architects and uh, a local planning consultant will plan, design a scheme that the planners will welcome. We will uh, create an enviable residential experience uh, in that highly desirable place. It has amazing uh, amenities. It will back on the village. It will look out to open fields. And yet, Ashford's amenities are only 16 minutes drive. Such amenities include one of the most prominent designer outlets in the UK, Ashford International train station, 
with more than 200 trains to London, St. Pancras, Waterloo, Liverpool and, uh, Liverpool and Waterloo stations. And of course, the Eurostar to Paris, Le Vie Parisienne. My business partner and I offer you to participate in this investment subject to planning. This means we will finance the exchange, we will take on the risk of obtaining planning. After gaining planning and only then, you will contribute with your investment. In the investment memorandum, I provided you with a finance scenario. That is only an option. We are open for alternative arrangements. I'm here because of you and because of us. Would like to work with you. If this deal is not meeting your risk reward appetite, I would be also happy to source other deals and discuss other deals with you. Hopefully you don't mind if I paraphrase Coppola, Coppola's Godfather. I hope one day I will offer you a deal you cannot refuse. I'm interested to know what, what state the deal is in at the moment. Have you got an offer in or is it just on, is it on the market, off the market? How have you found it? The deal is so imminent. If I was not here, I was reading, you know, the final copy of the contract and the reports and the uh, surveys that uh, is in my inbox. So you have it ready to exchange any day, basically? It is basically, we just have to approve the final contract. We Correct. have to approve uh, the exchange, send in you know, the deposit, fully refundable deposit, uh, by the way. Correct. And then uh, the deal is uh, ours. Okay, looks like a good plot on the edge of a, a village. So it is. have you, in terms of your planning research so far, how far have you got with that in terms of that viability that you just mentioned? Is it in a sort of designated development area? Can you give me a bit more information about how far you've got with that? So basically, this is currently outside the cartilage, cartilage of the uh, yeah, village, village Brooklyn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, the planners lifted this property, what uh, you see in the, in the uh, documentum I provided, into the adopted plan. And uh, there is uh, clear evidence that they would welcome, you know, high quality yeah. design it's houses. Zoned, it's zoned anyway. It's zoned, zoned basically. Zoned. Okay. It's going to be the new zone. So Nicholas, you haven't got to worry about that. That's good. Um, yep. Why is the land, I'm looking at the picture on screen there, uh, to the sort of um, northwest of it, um, appears part of the same plot? Because What's at the moment it's that? on the same title. On the same title, and so why is it is it owned by a um, farmer who's the current landowner? It is. And why it are they is, selling just this part? It is owned by a retired lady who retired to Italy, right? And although we don't have any written agreement on that, she also indicated that if we successfully, you know, obtain planning and close this deal, complete on it, she would be willing to sell us the rest of the property at agricultural land price. I'm sure that won't happen. <laughs> she wants you know, to see if you succeed. Hope, and, hope uh, dies lost. Yeah, I think she wants to hold it back because she would want to have the uplift um, of, of all the work you've done. So that's why I asked, because now's the time to negotiate on that, if you're going to negotiate on it. Do you think it could be on the table now? It, it, it is. It can be on the table now. Yeah. Right. Excellent. OK. And uh, you didn't answer my question regarding how did you come about the plot? Is it on the market, off the market, how have you, have you found it? We, we work with sourcing agent, but this was actually an on-market uh, offer that we went on, you know, for it right away. Just got it quickly, yeah. Uh, got it quickly, well done. get it fixed, uh, and as I said, exchange of contracts is imminent. If it's on the market, speed is, is critical, and Absolutely. you've done well there, so, okay, thank you. So the build cost you've got at 1.8, although that includes some contingency and other things. Can you break that down a little bit for us? The 1.8 is only the build cost, okay. uh, i.e. from the groundworks up. The re for the rest, I provided in the appendix a breakdown of the fees oh, because uh, as you've seen in the, in the first page as well, uh, together, uh, all together with the SDLT, there are 430,000 pounds allocated to fees, including sale, co sale cost of Community finance, levy. cost of sale, and so on and so on. While we're on the numbers, and thank you for the breakdown, 
we've got that. But there seem to be two. I'm just a little confused. So on the front page, we have the profit of 780k. Yeah. Gross profit. Yeah. And then on page eight, where you've got it split 50-50 between Angel and yourselves, you've got it as 230k each. Yes, 230k each, which is already profit before tax. So basically, the 780 is pre-finance profit, right? Yes, yes. Which pre-finance and pre pre cost of sales, pre tax. I understand you want to know that, but if if that's that's not what we're going to get back, so so no. it's not that of that much interest. But the but on page on the other appendice that we have, you have got kind of the low, medium, and high GDV, and it seems to me. So you've said the four thirty or four sixty is mid, but this is using the high. It's the high GDV that's used on this calculation. Yes. High GDV is used uh, in in the in the material except you know the pre-tax profit that uh, where i where i stated the mid range and, and what was the range of that uh, 430 430 no yeah that's the mid one but what's the high and the low the high is 530 yeah and the low is 340. now you've explained it sort of to me <laughs> i'm like i feel better off well i'm better yeah i, um, yeah, I think the paul yeah uh, I kind of I was getting a bit perplexed myself there, but Helen you're kind of dug and a, you're bit, bright, a bit deeper. So look at me. I think the difficulty with this deal is when when you take out the those extra bits which do need to be taken out, you're only at about ten to sixteen percent profit yeah. on GDV, on GDV. Yeah. which isn't enough. No, you know you're going to lose money on this deal. Yeah, more than more than likely you will lose money on this deal. Yeah. with just a ten percent profit margin. The gross profit on cost is twenty seven percent. But that's based on your 780 number, 780, right? Yeah. But you can't work it out on that because that isn't your total cost. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Got to work it out on it, it, 430. Uh, yes and no. That's my total cost in terms of where variations can happen, like the build cost. Obviously, the interest payment can vary as well if the project is delayed. I accept that. But uh, for that, uh, we will have a long period, you know, to prepare for the build itself, because we will go into planning. It will take up to 12, probably even longer time to gain, get planning. We use our main architect, who, you, who we use on other projects in this deal, and we will work with the architect and our QS, you know, to prepare for the tender towards the late, later stage of the planning. That will help us, you know, to move from planning into build very fast. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll stop you there, if I may, because that's going to cost you an awful lot of money. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared to put at least £100,000 into planning consultancy before you've gained planning said, into we, the tender phase? As I said, we, we, we basically take the risk pre-planning. But you're going to be prepared to not only take the risk over the exchange monies, you're now saying you would be prepared to take the risk for all the work and consultants and design fees to prepare the site for tender before you go in planning. Because I would say that's madness, you shouldn't do that. What you're better off doing is negotiating a contract with a vendor where you have, say, three months post-planning uh, gain to complete. We have, we have, we and have that will be a safer months, way of doing it. We have two months post-planning uh, to complete. Okay, well, that's a good start. I would say three months would be safer, two would be very tight to get, get up to a competitive tender stage, at this, especially at this stage in the market where everyone's extremely busy and already deployed on jobs. So given that you haven't exchanged, Regardless of what happens today, that would be a good thing to give you some advice on is to go back and try and get at least three months from the planning. There are some good tricks as well, actually, when you are getting that planning through. You don't have to push the council at the final stages for, for their decision notice. Um, and if you've got a good planning officer, you might better gain a few weeks there. But I'd advise you on that I think, point. I think that's great advice, Nicolas. Thank you. And, you know, combined with uh, your previous advice uh, to try to negotiate on that land now, 
mm, uh, we might be able to combine the two and I agree. get a free uh, month yeah. completion period. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, where it's maybe marginal now, with another two slices of land, you get all the economies of scale of building the bigger site, where, then your overall costs will come down. Mm. You're able to tap into larger construction firms that are going to build more than five houses, because then you're really looking at a, more of a local construction firm. Uh, and suddenly your cost could, could come down overall as well. So I think that other piece of land is, is really okay. worth talking about now. Nicholas, that's, let's get back to that's fantasy. Let's get back to some reality. The reality, the reality is you're going for playing for five, for five houses. So what is on the site at the moment? Half of it is uh, agricultural land. Yep. The other half uh, is uh, ex-commercial uh, land. Uh, we, and for that reason, for that will uh, once we, you know, uh, completed, we will do a soil survey. That's what you should be doing before you before you even exchange, in my view. Now, when you see commercial land, what is on it? Is there buildings on it? Yeah, uh, uh, there's there's some building ruins, basically. Okay, so demolitions required? No, no. It's 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 more like removing uh, some remains of walls up oh, to okay. 50, 50 okay. centimetres. Okay. So th there are no buildings. No. So. Okay, so before you exchange, my advice would be uh, so to get the soil test done, check the contamination of the land. Archaeological dig, I notice that there's a possibility of that. I would do a stage one desktop study for the archaeological dig, if you haven't done it, to make sure that there's nothing serious in there because you've got a list of buildings close by. I would definitely do those checks before you exchange contracts, whether, you know, Nicholas or whoever else wants well, to invest, the, it's the, so important. The, can I tell you how we manage mm. this uh, yeah. in, in, in the contract? Yeah. So basically, uh, already our offer was subject to surveys. Right. So basically, uh, with the contract that we created, yep. we have the right to do these surveys. Yes, good. Uh, very soon, you know. Once you've exchanged. Once, once we exchange. Yep. Yep. If Perfect. Certainly. If it finds th things that will seriously lower the value of the land because of an expensive remediation uh, um, reason, yep. then we will be able to either uh, deduct that from the price or uh, walk away from the contract. In, in simple terms, what what is too much? You know, what is too much? What does it say in the agreement? To your satisfaction, is it? Uh, to it's not written that in, in such a detail in the right. contract, but the way we manage it on another site yes. is basically that we, we found a minor uh, contamination there yeah. that requires remediation. And basically the seller, we agreed with the seller that he accepts mm. a QS report on the incremental cost of yes. the remediation. That's fine, but what does this what does this agreement say? We will then put that into this agreement. It has well. to be in. It has to be in, and it needs to be your, to your satisfaction, because you know the, the, the QS comes up with a price, whatever whatever the survey says. In my view, if there's anything at all, and then uh, the QS props up the price, and then you prove that by having it done, and then that's final price, and that's taken off the value, that's taken off the purchase price, because if not, you could be underwater within. A, you know, quite a short Before you start. Yeah. yeah, so that's really important on any land these days, really, because the the contamination, ec ecology, all these things, and ecology can only be done at certain times of the year as well. So, you know, crested newts and all this other damn silly Slow business. Worms. Nitrate neutrality is big it, now. Yeah, it's all it's all crazy, and but we all have to adhere to it. Well, ask a question Andrew. about some of the funding. Um, so 500k from angel investors, and there's 220k that you guys are putting in. Can I just ask about the source of that funds? Is that your money or coming from other investors? That's that's our money. Okay. There's no other in because this, the nature of this pack looks as though it's gone out to a wider audience. Is there are there any? Would there be any other investors involved apart from the banks? and the angels. Uh, Ranjan, uh, the nature of the pack is because I base this on our standard format for investment memorandum. It was created in the last three days, but as I said, it looks like an investment memorandum because we're using, I picked, you know, uh, parts from our standard uh, investment memorandum. This hasn't, this hasn't gone out 
to anywhere. Okay. It has only come fresh. Here. So you know that that's fresh. Fresh. That is, that fresh. Is fresh. fresh from known. the printer. I know, but if you were going to do it and you knew it was for here, that, that page is misleading. So for next time, take that out. So the angels would come in just for the 18 months that you're talking yeah. about. Yes. So the 29% yes. ROI is, is for the 18 under, months. Under 18 months. Yeah. Yes. Have you got a long stop to your... Um, your contract so if you if it goes yeah. past 12 good, months good for your, we, your planning we, we have uh, the base uh, term for the contract is 18 months good and we have a potential six six months you know extension if there's at that point there's an active or planning is so, in so have you got the right to have you got the option to appeal should it fail yeah, yeah, yeah. you have appeal appeals mm. at the moment taking over a year so you just want to bear that in mind yeah. again you know, but I know if you if you say to someone, well, you know, you might be two and a half years before you get your money. It's not an easy sell. I appreciate that. It's overall 24 months. Yeah. And, yeah uh, no, that I, that I we have yeah. rights for contractual. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think you can probably tell from, by my questions and, and the point I made before that it's not one for me. I think the the the, the overall profit is too tight. Um, so for those reasons, it's not for me. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I'm exactly where Paul is on that. Thank you. Um, it's not really my bag, first of all, so there's no nothing I can add in terms of value and expertise in this in, in, in this area of building new houses. So for that reason, I'm out. But I do think that you are obviously experienced in this area and it's no reflection on your um, credibility and ability to do this. It's just uh, my ability to add value to your proposition. I understand. Thank you, Andrew. When you look at the figures and what, look at what you're paying for this, it ought to work better than it does. What is what? What have you got down as your? Uh, how much per square foot to build have you put down? It is two thousand one hundred pounds per square uh, meter. That works out to two hundred. Yeah, two hundred uh, okay. per square foot. That's very sensible. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I'm doing Nicholas's job for him now, unfortunately, because he's going last. Okay. If I said to you that with what the effort you're putting in and the money you're putting in we could fund the deal via the bank with me putting in any shortfall, because I don't think there will be a shortfall, to be honest with you. We go to the right bank and the right people, and they know me and all the rest of it, hopefully. Um, and I take 50% of the profit, you take 50% of the profit. Would you have an objection to that if I don't have to put any money in myself? John, I wouldn't have objection because, as I said, I would love to work with you guys. And uh, I was really hoping that at least one of you would see, you know, how to squeeze more juice out yeah. of this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let me have a think about it while Nicholas carries on. I, I like your bill cost. It's good to hear someone mm. speaking sense sensible on, on yeah. bill cost. That's really good. I was hoping you'd go first. Well, I have gone first. I'm now left. So it you've for offered fifty-fifty. You, no. Well, I am thinking about it. You, you, you're accepting. I'm not. His no, offer. I'm thinking about it. I haven't made a decision. You haven't made an offer. No. We're waiting for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we allowed to make offers I can't in take two parts? That was part one. Yeah, that was a bit part cheeky. Two parts <laughs> offer. going to have a go, and then what? you're going to go for part two. <laughs> What's the next instalment of John's offer? <laughs> I, I said I'm. Th I'm just thinking about. I'm just thinking about. Well, it. I think people that are thinking about it um, are not fully behind the people they're looking to invest in. I'm fully behind you and your business. I think you've got an excellent business. I'd love to work with you. I'd love to work with you on more than this site. And to be honest. I'd like to hear about your other site as well. And I'm going to offer you a share of 60 40 in your favour as a business offer to come into your business as an advisory shareholder. And I'm pretty sure we can maximise and squeeze everything out of this and try and buy the site next door and potentially maximise any other site you do in the future. So that's my offer. Thank you, Paul. John, you. I was told that you live close. To that side. Uh, well, I'm I'm, 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 I'm Suffolk, road. so I am pretty close. You're quite right. Um, my parents live in Kent. I'm there all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my offer: 50/50, on the basis that um, I don't believe we'll have to put any more, any further cash into the deal once you've got planning. If we do, I'll look into I'll look into doing that. Um, and we go fifty. We go fifty fifty, um, and and it's it's a given that if if you come up with another deal that works, 
got the joint venture fund and so on. We can do it within that or whatever else anyway. Uh, and we get to know each other. Um, so that's my offer. So my offer is 50-50. Nicholas is more generous. His offer is 60-40. Um, and, you know, we are competitors in today, but, but I have to say that Nicholas is very good at this type of structuring this type of deal and doing this type of thing. I'm more straightforward in as much that there's the deal, that's what we do. There's two offers, or obviously the opportunity, you know, you may not want to take either offer, you might want to... Um, is there a way to merge the two worlds? Is there a way to merge the two? No, I don't share. No, you don't share. I John don't share. doesn't share. <laughs> uh, can I go to the wall? Of course you can. You're very welcome to. Take your time. Thomas, take as long as you want, as long as you come up with the right decision. <laughs> John, I would like to work with you on projects in the future, but at this time, I would like to accept Nicholas's offer. Great. Fantastic. Great. Well done. Well done. Uh, thank Very you, much. Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the first time I was nervous waiting for an answer. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that's the first time you've been nervous waiting for an answer, to be fair, <laughs> Nicholas, in your life. With all due respect, um, personal or otherwise. No, well done, Nicholas. Um, Thank you. Through gritted teeth, I have to say, yet again. But there we go. <laughs> I'm very pleased with that one. So, Thomas, good news? Bad news? Good news. Great. I got two offers and I accepted Nicholas's offer. Fantastic. Who else was the other offer John, from? Okay. John, and I would love to work with John as well uh, on a deal sometime. Hopefully yep. that will happen. Yep. But uh, Nicholas's offer was uh, unbeatable. Was it? Too good to refuse. Too good to refuse. Fantastic. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Oliver, it's great to have you here with us today. Hi Lizzie, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, tell us where you've come from today. So I've come from Harpenden, which is uh, in Hertfordshire, not too far from where we are today. Yes, yeah, so the deal is a light industrial warehouse. Uh, at the moment it's disused, so it's a commercial to residential conversion. We're okay. looking to build three flats there. It already has planning permission in place. Okay, great. And how much investment are you after? We need probably around £800,000 from an investor. Uh, purchase price is one6 um, and we're looking at around a 20% uh, return on GDV. Okay, all right, well fingers crossed for you. We'll Thank get you in now and I'll have a little chat to you when you get out. We're now going to London, I think, with um, Oliver. He's got this deal which looks like a warehouse conversion. I think there's a basement involved and a roof to come off. Two things I don't like hearing personally, but... Um, really? We... I thought it just needed a lick of paint. Yeah, well, <laughs> a bit more than that, I think, Ranjan. Uh, let's get Oliver in, shall we? Yeah. Oliver, thank you very much for coming in today. Um, a very interesting looking scheme and one that I think I saw towards the end of last year myself. So it'd be interesting to see what your take is on it. Okay. Over to you. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Oliver Taylor. Um, I am from Harpenden, which is not too far from here. Uh, I've brought today a deal which is a commercial uh, to residential conversion. It's a light industrial warehouse in London. I'm looking today for around £800,000, depending on what financing options we go for. The conversion already has full planning permission in place, and we're looking to build three flats in the uh, existing building. Okay, and what's the purchase price, Oliver? So the purchase price is 1.6 million. Yep. It was on the market for 1.8 million when I first saw it last year. The price has now been reduced to 1.6. I have actually made offers in the past below that price, mm -hmm. which have unfortunately not been accepted. So the figures that I've looked at today and worked on are on the basis of the 1.6 million purchase price, which based on uh, last minute financing uh, numbers, which I received today, um, mm -hmm. the, the numbers stack up. Um, I'm sure if they don't, you'll let me know. The GDV is? 
So the GDV, so there's a few different GDVs that you may see in there. Um, mm. the, the, there's a GDV, which is about 4.5 million, which has been provided by a local agent. Um, I mean, they're obviously usually going to be quite uh, optimistic. I've had uh, financing offers uh, in principle from a few lenders, which are in the pack as well. Um, I think there's about four lenders in there that have offered to lend and they've Good. given it a GDV of 4.1. I've also had a QS uh, run the numbers and look at it, who is the most conservative of, of people. So you would like to think that worst case scenario, his numbers will be where it's coming in. And, and that's just over 4 million. Okay. And build costs? So the build costs um, are about 1.1 million. Um, and then with uh, fees and SIL and stamp duty, etc. We're looking at about 1.3, 1.35. Okay, so the total out, the total that you're going to spend will be. We're looking at about 2.950. Uh, and your resales are 4.1 to 4.5. Correct. Okay, lovely. That's good. Thank you, um, Nicholas. What do you think? Well, the address is Waldo Works. Waldo Road. Yes. Got to ask, where's Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. What a name. That's mm. brilliant. In terms of your um, build cost, what sort of uh, price per square foot are you basing that off, please? Or, uh, and what's the size of the site? The site, um, I'd have to consult my pack. I'd have thought, Oliver, with all due respect, you'd know the square footage of the site. Uh, or why am I being unkind? Is it well, 1735? Is it that on that one? There is, yes. Yeah. So the current, okay. the current site is 1735. Yes, okay. correct. Yeah. But, what um, are but are you building, how many floors are you building? So we'll, so, so we'll be building, there's a basement excavation, which will become a lower ground floor. Right. And then there'll be a ground floor, a first floor and a second floor. So we're building two floors up and one down. Right, okay. So what is the total square footage you're building? Uh, to be honest, John, I don't know that number off the top of my head. I uh, am slightly bemused here. Um, we, we've got a sort of warehouse looking project. We're going to excavate and make a basement. Yes. Underpin. We're going to add another, take the roof off and add another floor. Why not knock the whole thing down? Well, why hasn't that been considered? So I, I'm, I'm keeping. Yeah. OK, so I'm not an experienced developer. Um, I've only started looking into development and property last year. So it's been about a seven month journey for me. Um, these are things that I'm sure, you, you know, you're bringing to light, bringing to the table. I know, Ranjan, you've quite a lot of experience in this. I've simply taken Some. plans <laughs> that are in place and just applied the things that I've learned or like to think I've learned over the last seven months. If there's a better angle, then, you know, I'm, I'm all ears and that would be fantastic. Yeah, I think probably that, that on this one, Ranjan, I would imagine, um, is, it, is it in a conservation area? Um, I, don't, I don't believe it is in a conservation area. I will be, they probably inquire, maybe they've inquired about knocking it down. It's a no-go. I would imagine. Yeah. It's quite an old building, isn't it? Mm. The one next door was was most likely done when this was permitted development, mm. and now it's not. Right. Uh, so insane. that's a different issue. The other I wanted to ask mm. you about is the planning. Is, so you've you're looking at a site with existing planning permission. It's been kicking around for some time. Mm. When does the planning? Because you have to implement. The, you have to start the planning permission in three years. How long? Have you, how long has it got? Yeah. So the planning permission. Um, the planning permission. I believe would have lapsed in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, however, I've had uh, confirmation from uh, the vendor that they have actually broken ground um, <laughs> and it's been confirmed. So the, the, the vendor employed a company to oversee the breaking of the ground um, and we've had up. relevant notice from the council saying that the planning permission is, Good. is, is, is active. That's the key. That's the key. Well That's done. The key. That's well the key. Well done for that. So yeah. many people say they're broken ground yes. and, and went that old, I say that old chestnut because that's what everyone says. Might as well yeah. have broken wind. You might, exactly, might as well have broken wind because when you go check with the council, oh no, we've got no record of it, but they've done it right. So that's good. That's good. But it just shows you how long this has been knocking around. Mm. And you have to ask yourself, why has it been knocking around so long? Um, 
And maybe it's a great opportunity now because it's come down in price and, you know, there's everything gets sold in the end. And sometimes you have the best to be really early in the deal before everyone knows about it or very late when everyone's looked at it and forgotten about it. So, you know, um, I think we need to keep an open, from personally, I'm keeping an open mind so far, Oliver, and you've done well. So yeah, the, the answer is, is the answer, I think, John, is that it's so close to the train line yeah. Yeah. and those inherent problems of a warehouse building that's not very solid probably in the first yep. place um, noise and vibration and all the rest of it are there any um is there any railway land immediately adjacent to this site that you have to get any permissions or easements over to get say services to the site do you know i don't know the answer to that question no okay because that that could be a problem that would certainly be something to ask the agent are they aware of any issues with um i forget the is it network rail i guess would it be um as to how exactly how close their land is um because that can and actually when you are within a certain proximity to railways i've not you know not done one myself but i know people that have um and it gets very complicated you still have very. to ask for all these permissions from the railway which can take months and months and months, yeah. and months to get yeah even though you're working in your own land if you're next to the railway you still have to apply for certain permissions so that would be something to explore because that would be a massive deal breaker possibly has been the deal breaker to date that's my hunch doesn't rule it out, but it's just something to be very aware of. Paul? Um, yeah, so, so given that the, the end um, sort of square footage is a bit uncertain, do you have a, a rough idea of, so the build cost is just over 1.1 million or thereabouts. <coughs> well, where, where's that figure come from? So that figure's come directly from my QS. Okay. Okay, so we assume that's correct. Fair enough. But, but do you know what he's based it on? Do you know the pound per square foot for the, the area? Um, I don't know the exact answer to that. Um, he, so I've, over the last several months, I've been trying to get myself into property. I've been networking, I've been meeting people, making connections. I believe you've read a couple of good, good books as well. I've read or some good books. Them. I've seen yeah. some all right YouTube videos as well. It's good and bad. So. Put it this Randon's way also got a YouTube channel. Oh, oh, right. If you've seen some great YouTube videos. Yeah. 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 On, yeah. on yeah. Yeah. Oliver, can I just yeah. say there's good and bad out there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, so it's, it's been, it's been a journey I've been, I've been going through. Um, I did a bit of training oh. um, with some people and I've had some people who have kind of taken me under their wing a bit to give me some yeah. mentorship Good. and one of them is this QS. So I'm not paying him for services. Um, he's been kind enough to give me some of his time to look yeah. over sites that I've been working on myself. Um, so he's just given me these headline figures, so well, I don't, I don't know the exact breakdown. Oliver, that's absolutely fine and, and well done you for yes. doing it the right way and not spending a fortune on education and all the no, rest but, of it. No, but you really do need to know your comparables. Like you, you need to... To work out the GDV. Uh, to work out mm. your GDV, but also need to make sure footage. you're comparing oranges and oranges, not apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you knew that, that would answer my question, which I don't think you're going to be able to answer like, like you've gone with the existing planning permission, which I assume is for the three flats. Yes. That's existing. Yes. Okay, because at a four point, a four ish mil uh, GDV, that's 1.3 million per flat, right? They, they are, that's a very big flat. If I had 1.3 million spend, I wouldn't be buying well, the extra they're, railway. They're, to be fair, they're exactly. almost, although they are called flats, probably called flats because they've got no outside space, but actually they're more like terrace houses, aren't I know, they? but even Town if, houses, even if really. you, you use Don't the you whole footage per yeah. floor of 1,700, I mm. mean, that's that's still an awful lot of money to be paid. That That's a high pound per square foot next to a railway line. And I think if you knew kind of what the pound per square foot it was comparable, per one bedroom, two bedroom, three yeah. bedroom, what have yeah, you, yeah. you'd be able to maximize or work out what you should be building there instead of three flats. Because I don't think three flats this, is going to maximize your here, profit on this. Is, is that a square footage? Yes. Yes. We've yes. got it then. We've so got it, yeah. This, 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 that spreadsheet is well, okay. an you've agent's got, valuation. You've got the square footage and you've got oh, the okay, valuation. But the square footages agent. are right. Square so footages are right of the flats that port. are going to be built. So it's, I, I can't quite make sense of it, but it says 2916, 1420, and 990. Is that yeah, one they're massive the square, one? Yes. One kind of massive one yes. and one less massive What's one. What's the total? Yes. Right, fair enough. You're good at maths, Paul. What's the total? Uh, it's about 5,300. Uh, yeah. 
About five and a half thousand. Five and a half, <coughs> five, four. Okay, so the bill costs were in about two hundred pounds a foot, but that includes the basement. The basement is probably double the rest of it yeah. in terms of cost. Mm. So, but you've had a QS do it, and 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 if if that's what the QS thinks, we have to go with that. He's the expert. He's the one who quantified that. You know, you used all his experience to quantify the values of everything. So, okay, and we got the sale figures off an agent as well. So you have got all the square footages. Yeah, so sorry, I just didn't have good. the total added up. No, don't, well, that's fine. We've, and my mental math is nowhere near no, as well, good as yours. Paul's a very bright man <laughs> and he's done it for you. But the total of those adds up to 4.65. So either those GDVs are over. So these GDVs are provided seven. by the agent. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that, you're analyzing his numbers <laughs> yeah. there, I thought, yeah. yeah. Um, Helen, the GDVs on the spreadsheet are provided by the agent, okay, so that's which what is a separate saying, exactly. GDV to what my QS has given. So all yeah. the numbers that I've given to you on the summary of the headline figures are the figures given by the QS, which yep. should be the worst case scenario figures, rather than the maybe more optimistic they agent are, figures. They normally are with the QS, they're pretty negative lot, yeah. I'd be interested to know, um, because these flats are very expensive mm -hmm. for, you know, for this part of London. I mean, you've got one flat that's two and a half million. Yes. Um, that's a huge, I mean, Knightsbridge kind of stuff you can buy. Um, when you're developing flats at that sort of level, let's assume those GDVs are correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, the spec, it's not a, no. a mm -hmm. basic kitchen. You know, mm -hmm. You're spending 50 grand on the kitchen, minimum underfloor heating. You've got mm -hmm. fancy yeah. doors and you're not basic doors and stuff like that. So I'm, I, I would have liked to have seen a bit more breakdown on the costs, sure. um, the build costs, because obviously the basement is a huge chunk. Sure. Uh, but there's also the, a much higher spec that's required to get anything like those values. Sure. Um, you know, just the lighting and control systems and fancy tech and all of that is, an, is much, sure. much more than a standard electrics. Yeah. Um, so it would have been interesting to see that because I'm not sh sure that is um, I accept that the QS has done a job, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure what his brief was as to the kind of spec yeah. for those three flats. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. It feels to me like the person that's put this in is trying to keep this under a certain social housing requirement of, I think it's four, under four flats is a much lower threshold for section 106 payments, things like that. And it's, that feels like Whereas, why they've yeah, done up. so smaller units. You know, if you go up to nine or 10 units, you'd be paying much higher section 106 mm. payments. So it's almost as if they've tried to artificially inflate the GDV yeah, by doing but, the smaller units. But they've big created units. something that you're not going to be able to, to sell. sell. No, no. Like even if you take you know, you go with your QS's numbers, so your 2.5 mil flat ends up 2.25 for a ground floor and a basement next to a train line. You're, you're at £770 per square foot. I don't know who's going to buy that. Yeah, effectively, based on those numbers, both the basement level one and level two are all the same price. And I think Helen has hit the nail on the head. My, I am always suspicious of uh, when someone's got a planning application, it hasn't been implemented, um, and people have just broke ground or whatever just to keep it going. And uh, Why not? All that time. And is it because what they've got planning for is just not worth implementing? Not yeah. Because either it's too costly or they're in a market for the finished product. Yeah. Um, and I'm not convinced. Okay. Um, I, I do appreciate that's obviously a very valid point. I mean, I've been speaking to the agent for, for some time now mm. and the vendor is, um, and this is just coming through the agent, so, yeah. you know, maybe take it with a pinch of salt but the the vendor um is a developer himself um bought this to develop for himself and uh, he has in the last couple of years come under ill health um and isn't able to now complete the development which is why he's looking to sell um that's what so i'm being told the planning so mission he no, I think he's, he's ill with the worry of it all yeah. um quite possibly i have to say i've heard that excuse on many occasions along with a few others. <laughs> um, and it may well be true, appreciate that. And I'm very sorry to hear if it is true. Um, but I think, you know, you are entering a world of property 
business, it's an industry, it's a business, and you have to treat it as such. And sadly, you can't always believe what everyone says to you. And it may well be that the whole of this needs to be rejigged, in my view, looked at again in diff with different eyes to see whether you can get six units in there, not three. That way, you know, you, you're, the, the risk is, is less in terms of, you know, if you don't sell the big one at two and a half million, you're really stuck. If you've got six and you can't sell one of them, you know, you can potentially rent it and get a decent yield on it because it's doesn't cost, it hasn't cost you so much. And remember, all the time we're trying to, and it might sound uh, strange for, pe for people listening to the show, but all the time we are looking to de-risk what we do before we purchase it. Yep. And people tend to think that we're, you know, balls in or out there buying and without checking everything. My goodness, look at this lady here. She knows how to check things. And the rest of us may sound quite more relaxed than Helen. Helen's on the figures like crazy. But actually, ultimately, we all check everything very thoroughly. We might, we might look more relaxed about it and so on, but I can tell you now, there isn't one of us along here that takes big risks. Mm -hmm. We don't do it. And I think for me, this is a big risk. And unfortunately, it isn't for me today. Okay, thank you. I'll follow that. Yeah, look, I, th I think I think you've done great seeking it out. Um, you've done all the right things, speaking with the right people. You've got the you know various different sort of quotes on the GDV and all the rest, which is great. Would have been nice to know the figures a little bit better, obviously, but you know that already. Um, you know, and I think the path you're on is the right one, and I'd love to work with you on that path. Um, I think I'd be a good partner ooh, for ooh, working with you on that path, um, but but not on this project because you know I, I agree like the cash it needs and mm -hmm. the amount of problems you're probably going to run into and therefore the time it's going to take and therefore that money probably, you know, a higher risk of that money being lost given that it's all using finance, you know, those finance costs are going to rack up and rack up and rack up and I just don't think it's, <clears throat> you know, I don't think these figures are, are right so far as, you know, the, in fact, I think the agent has just been a bit silly with these figures, you know, valuing the basement at the same as the level two flat. It's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so he's led you astray a little bit there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for that reason, I don't think this is the project for you. For your, You shouldn't be doing this for your first project anyway, you know. And, and the fact that everyone on the panel kind of agrees that it's high risk sort of justifies that. So I don't think this, this one isn't for me, but would certainly like to keep in touch. But Paul, we haven't heard from Nicholas yet. But yeah, well, we'll see. It might change, he might have a different opinion to everyone else. <coughs> Who knows? Just to summarize some of the points, this is a two to three year project in my view. When you're financing it, that's very, very costly. And also when you're developing the end product, the end products in terms of these flats, in terms of GDVs are so out of kilter with the comparables. It's very, very difficult to see what the market is. You really want to be developing a product like a one, two bedroom flat where there are plenty of them around to compare them to. And I think for your first project, you really want to be looking where you can make three flats out of the, an existing envelope of a building. Yeah. No external changes. And in the time it would take you to do this, you'd do three or four of those. Yeah, I agree. And turn your money much more. Yeah. Bit, um, bit ambitious to start with. For me, it's too ambitious to start with. Yeah, um, no, I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, if I could add, um, so there, there is a property that we're in the process of buying, um, which is down the road from here on Chamberlain Road, um, which is just off of where that Kensal Green station is, um, which is a five bedroom house on three floors. The QS who I'm talking to you about, um, we've, we've looked at that, um, I found the site, I, I uh, valued it, and we're actually looking to split that into flats. It's on the high street. And when we looked at it initially, or I looked at it, I saw on Street View that the property two doors down had a roof extension. Um, so we, I spoke to the, the QS and we spoke to an architect and we we're very confident that we would get a roof extension. So we're actually trying to convert that into four separate flats okay. on each well, floor. Yep. So we do have comparables in the area based on the research we did to that, albeit these are much smaller flats um, and diff different to that. Um, the offer was accepted and we're in the process of buying it now. So we haven't actually started Sounds like it. you should have bought that deal. Um, Helen? I agree with everything the guys have said. I think with the right person, you could make this work if you went back to scratch. 
I think I, I don't think that person is me. I don't have appetite to to work through this and handhold, but I do think there's a deal to be done on it. If you know and you get the right product for that market, and it's going to have to be priced so keenly, forget what the agents say. If you're next to um, a train line, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to have to price it discounted. You yeah. just are. Um, the one trick I always think is, would I live there? Yeah. Would you live there? Well, I haven't got two and a half million, so no. No, but would you, if you had two and a <laughs> half million, would you live there? Would you uh, live somewhere it, else? P possibly not, no. Or, or, I mean, we've, we've covered a lot of points, I think. Um, I'm not going to go over those. Um, Good. <laughs> it would be. It would take me too long to correct all of John's errors. So, um, <laughs> very good, very good, very good. Um, what I what I will offer you, I'm going to make you an offer. If you can do a JV with the landowner, I'll work with with you in it. You and I can do it fifty fifty, and I can help you get the funding for the development finance. But we'd need the we'd need the vendor on board to put the land in essentially, because that de-risks it. You know, mm. I don't want to put in 800 grand on this. As, as the guys have mentioned, it's going to take far too long, far too cost, the, 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 the interest kills it, apart from anything else. It needs a redesign, it needs to go back to planning, we need to get smaller unit, we need to speak to Nas National Rail, or Network Rail, whoever is the relevant rail authority next door. If we can solve all those problems over a couple of year period with the vendor on board, they can have a share of the profit. It might be 33% you know, each uh, of the profit. I'd be very interested in working with you on, on that basis. That might be highly unlikely, but it's been on the market a long time. You seem to have a relationship with the agents. It may be an, it may be, you know, an opportunity. So if that sounds of interest, I'd, I'd love to have a crack at it. I like, I like challenges, but, but not where I'm risking 800 grand for challenges. So that's my offer if you'd like to think about it. Uh, yes, I really appreciate that. And I would like to accept. Thank you. Fantastic, well right. Great stuff. Let's hope we um, can negotiate it. With a vendor. Thank you very much. Could be a silver lining in that one. There's a reason why they've done this duplex flat on the basement and the ground. A lot of these London councils insist on a family-sized unit on the on on the on the ground floor. So that's why you can go in night and day, but it's in their policies. They'll never give you four flats. I take that as red rag to a bull, then, Jen. <laughs> so you, you, love a, you love a challenge. I'll be keeping an eye, keeping an eye. But, but you see the difference between you, Ranjan, and Nicholas. Nicholas is optimistic and positive. You today have been... He must have been an estate agent. He probably was in his day. You, on the other hand, today have been rather negative, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Or and realistic. I'm surprised at that. All realistic. And the vendor needs to be well, the one thing I will right say, Nicholas, right is you can now prove to the council that it's not it's been on the market a long time. You yeah. can exactly. actually prove yeah. that what is built isn't it, 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 you know, what what is potentially Permission. got planning for yeah. is not possible to to do. So that's the one thing that he has got in his favour, and he's very, and also Nicholas is very bright. That's the other thing. One, he's got. one thing so, I've just realised, which we would need to check. Mm. And I don't know if any of you guys know this. I don't. I so. Go on. Because they've broken ground, does that solidify the existing planning? No, it protects it. But it, but protects the it. fact you haven't been able, they haven't been able to get the deal built, um, to me, would be a good reason for going back to the planners. Because it's say, not Look, implemented; it's just started. No, yeah. so you this get isn't, planning, this isn't acceptable. Yeah, we can't do it. Yep, it's yep. not possible to create homes like you've given planning for. We need to do something different. Yeah. Well, I think you might have an angle there. You can Could create be. them, you can't sell them, but exactly redoing it's the way yeah. forward. Well done, Nicholas. With vendors on site. Drinks Happy are days. on you yet again. Oliver, so tell me how it went. Yeah, it went really well, thank you. Good, congratulations. Thank Was you. there a deal done? Uh, there is a potential deal on the table, yeah. Nick, Nick offered to uh, look at doing a joint venture with the vendor, um, okay. if that's possible. But Nick has said, you know, if we can do a joint venture with the, the vendor, then that de-risks the whole situation, so he's happy to uh, uh, make that offer to me. Brilliant, so you can explore it further, yes. see how you get on over the next few weeks and go from there. Yes. Oh, well, good luck and congratulations. Thank you very much. And I hope it's the start of uh, an exciting property career for you. Thank you. Well, it's been a great day here at Property Elevator. That's all we've got time for though. We'll see you next time.
Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property.